What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am BDLM coming with my buddy J4Y, bringing you this Dota on a Man presentation. This uh, nice little game here we have between the the Radiant team and the Dire team. What's going on, buddy? I have never heard of these. The Clash of the Titans. What a matchup! This this uh, rivalry has been going on for just just so long, and finally, Ten years. We, ye arguably years. Well, you could argue that because I have no idea, and I will not fight you on that. But regardless, uh, obviously, it's an all pick because. It is the Radiant versus the Dire and no one else that we know. So we're just going to go probably quickly down the lines here to get picked. I'll start off with these two picks from the Radiant. We got an Anubis on Crystal Maiden and Nevermind on, uh, if only he was on Nevermore, but he is on Anti-Mage. Yeah, unfortunate. We have Ogre Magi for the Dire team. I love it. Yeah, we're going to have to see how he's able to fare, though, against the Anti-Mage. That'll be... Uh key in the game. I mean, luckily, you know, Ogre Magi, he just got put into the game, but he's a very tanky hero. So, you know, while the Ogre, or the Anti-Mage will be able to do a lot of damage with the ultimate, Ogre Magi has a lot of health to be able to try and take that. Invoker also gets picked up by Bices on the Dire team. We're probably going to wind up seeing him go mid. It'll be neat to see if he goes, you know, the Quaswex or the Exort build. Uh, that's something I'm definitely going to be looking forward to, uh, to seeing. You know, if he tries to go for that global presence or more of the team fight. Yeah, I would think, well, I mean, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the rest of this team builds out, but uh, with the Ogre Magi, if you get another good stun and you build this Exor, we see that a lot in pro games recently, uh, they'll go that Exor, get that early sun strike, and with a couple of stuns, it's an easy setup and really helps get those kills early. Batrider picked up actually by Captain Blackbeard, so that's an interesting choice there. And then on the other team, we got ourselves Locust, who is playing Outworld Destroyer. Haven't seen that guy in a while. And Chef on Queen of Pain. Oh, and a random life stealer. Storm Spirit is a is a life. I think isn't that supposed to be is life? You know, we don't ask these kinds of <laughs> questions. They probably he probably has really good reasons for putting it that way. We have the rest of our picks though. So to flesh out the Radiant team, we have Crystal Maiden, Anti-Mage, Queen of Pain, Outworld Destroyer, and the Life Stealer. A ton of carry potential there for the Radiant and the Dire team composed of Invoker, Clockwork, Ogre Magi, Batrider, and Clinks. So they obviously, the Dire did not take any heed to what I was saying because I said set up some stuns. Um, they chose Clinks and uh, Clockwork. Well, I do like the clockwork with the sun strike. That actually can work pretty well if they do want to decide that. But clinks, uh, pretty questionable choice there. Yeah, I will have to see how he does. I mean, he's going for the bottom lane. I imagine he will be joined by someone, maybe uh, Batrider. Actually, hanging out in the top lane. Not sure what he's going to do. But looks like early on, Crystal Maiden might want to try and put some harass onto the clinks. But no, he just goes invisible and he is able to run away. So in the bottom lane, we have the Clinks versus Anti-Mage Crystal Maiden. In the jungle, we have the uh, the Life Stealer and apparently a, an AFK Bat Rider who is going to be stacking. Oh, and has a smoke at a seat, so he's going to be looking to stack up creeps, put a bunch of sticky napalms on them, and I guess Firefly <laughs> Invisible. That's interesting. Never seen that before. You know, we more commonly see that in Darkseer. Uh, in the middle lane, we have Invoker. Versus Our World Destroyer, and then the top lane, Ogre Magi and Clockwork versus the lone Queen of Pain, who has already taken quite a bit of harass so far. Bottom lane, we got some action, actually. It looks like Crystal Maid, oh, almost goes down from the clicks. He just hit level 2, started putting the Zero X pressure, and if she didn't use that health pot, she would have definitely went down. That would have been really interesting if he actually got first blood 2 versus 1 there, but unfortunately, did not happen. I'm really interested now about this Batrider farming. I have never even heard of this concept before. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, he's doing a really good job taking out this yellow camp. I mean, we know that the sticky napalm gives you a lot of extra damage against your targets. And actually, here in the bottom lane, we have Clinks looking to maybe go in on this Crystal Maiden, deciding to stick around on a very low amount of health. But he has to be careful. This enemy is going to be able to burn a lot of the mana. This is dangerous. Uh, yeah, I'm he glad he got out. It. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, slowing down there, waiting to see exactly what was going to happen. But he decided against you know playing... Like that, I mean, if you were to go down there, that's going to give Animage even more room to farm. I mean, right now, because he's at full health and that Clinks is already so low, he has just a ton of space to be able to pick up as many kills as he wants. Yeah, meanwhile, we see Invoker actually going uh, the Quas build as we were kind of... We didn't know which way he was assigned to go, and apparently he wants that Cold Snap early just to maybe have a better chance of taking damage from this Locust, Outworld Destroyer, who is going, as you can see, he has Astral Prism in two points, going to use it there, just to 
throw a little harassment out there, lower than intellect, although if Eric hasn't cast many spells yet, of course I say that, he casts one there. And uh good harass, but not really uh, you know, big damage coming out either side. Yeah, we see there's actually a, a growing radiant gold advantage camp of three hundred gold. I mean that's obviously because you know the bat rider isn't killing as many creeps as he is trying to stack up this camp. We can see him again stacking it up. We'll have to wait and see how high it looks to get that thing before he just tries to wipe it out. And we'll have to see if he can, you know, put on some pressure maybe, if he can get that creep kill the the creep camp killed and then, you know, maybe get a couple levels off of it. I could see him really being able to come in and uh, slow somebody up, use the flame break to keep them in range. We'll just have to see what he looks to do. He's actually pulling the top lane for his team into this yellow creep camp. Really interesting decision there, and that's gonna really help the clockwork and the ogre magi be able to keep the creeps on their side of the map stop Queen of Pain from being able to farm safely. Yeah, I was going to say, Queen of Pain's only at 6-1, and one, so she's really getting kept down, but at the same time, Clockwork and Ogre, they got combined 16-1, and one, so they're kind of splitting the farm a little bit evenly. I think it would be better suited <coughs> to maybe pull up all that gold, get like uh, Arcane Boots really quick on someone in that lane. Uh, that would be some amazing pressure. They could put on anyone that comes in there. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that no one's going for Ring of Basilius in that lane. I mean, Clockwork has such great potential to harass, and when they need to keep this Queen of Pain down, I mean, they're doing a good job of it so far, but just being able to throw out those rockets, really strong to be able to uh, keep her back, even when she's sitting back in the lane like she is right now, and then if they are able to get a kill on her, be able to put a lot of pressure on that tier 1 tower. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, we look at the farm, uh, Anti-Mage, <clears throat> up to 18 and 3, Actually, actually, bottom, we got a stun here and a little uh, throwing that concoction on him. Uh, ignite, actually, is the technical term. But still, doing a good amount of harass, I would like to see more coming out of Clockwork. Maybe be a little more aggressive, make her use that blink move and, you know, really get away from these creeps, deny the experience as well as the gold. Uh, but Clink's on the other hand, bottom, 7-1. I mean, getting, I mean, I guess that's equal to Queen of Pain, so really no harm, no foul, I guess, overall. That's very true. Both teams doing a great job of holding down the side lane solo. I mean, a Klinks is obviously going to need more farm in the late game, but it's really unfortunate they're not going to have the Queen of Pain in the middle game to really be able to, a big source of damage. She's now level 5. The Klinks also level 5. So yeah, they're they're about at the same spot now. And <laughs> I just keep looking at this Batrider. I know. Creep again. He's got three or four stacks here on this one camp. We'll have to wait and see Holy how boy. long he... Uh, decides to keep stacking those and when it is that he decides you know, just pull the trigger on that. I mean right now he's level 2, about to level 3 probably after he kills this camp. Yes, he'll definitely get to level 3. So I, I really want to see what he does with all this farm he's getting from the jungle. I, I can only assume it's going to be a quick blink dagger. Oh my gosh, how many times is he going to stack this thing? It's go it's, just, it's out of control. I have, I guess he's oh, he's got level 2 on that firefly, so what is he going to wait for after this pull? I would think that's when he's going to make his move. I mean, you can't stack it much more than this. I mean, there's just a point where creeps stay behind too long. Like we can see now, it's taking three or four seconds for them to get out of range of that spawn area. So, you know, he might get this one. It appears that he will not, actually. So he might look to try and kill that uh, very shortly. It's just unbelievable. I, I, yeah, I have never seen it, like you said. It's interesting. Invoker, meanwhile, going an interesting spill. He's got two in Exhort and two in Quas, so not really making up his mind what he really wants to put what his points into. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what he really decides, to f what he favors in this game. Um, top oh, under top tower is under attack. It's already at half health. The Ogre Magi and Clockwork putting insane pressure. Pretty awesome, actually. Oh, and you see uh, a rocket getting shot down to the bottom lane to kind of help out. Kind of an interesting choice there. Yeah, I mean, you were talking earlier about getting the Arcane Boots in that lane. We can now see that Clockwork has achieved that. So the both, he and the Ogre Magi are going to be able to keep Queen of Pain back very easily between the rockets and the stuns. She's not going to be able to safely sit anywhere near the creeps. So if they want to, they can just keep pressure up on this tower. And if they had wards up, which they do not, they would be able to make sure that nobody rotates up top to stop them when they go to push that tower. Absolutely. Uh, Batrider just tried to pull that again, and it didn't work. And he didn't know that, but uh, you could see they didn't respawn because it was just taking too long for him to pull it, as you were calling. So, uh, you know, at some point here, I don't know what his waiting, what he's waiting for exactly, but you're, you're going to have to think it's going to have to come up soon. And that's going to be a ton of golden experience. He right now is really behind as Lifestealer. 
Um, really behind, actually. Lifestealer is up to 30 and 0 at level 6 compared to a level 3 Bat Rider with 10 and 0. So that's going to be a big shift. Yeah, I mean, we're just looking at the gold farm. We can actually see uh, that the anti mage is leading the game now with a 330 gold farm. That's, you know, almost about 70 ahead of anybody else on the opposing team. So he's going to be able to get right where he wants to be for the mid game. He has the ring of health. He could turn that into a vanguard if he looks to try and engage in the middle game. But I would imagine he's probably going to go for the battle fury. Actually, he looks to go on this clink, burn a little bit of mana, keep him back if you can. Keep his mana down. He's not going to be able to skelet and walk away, and he's going to have to be a lot Action safer. Middle. Oh, Outward Sawyer gets killed right as he uses his ultimate. Lifestealer, thankfully, was there to clean up. Uh, we caught the tail end of it, at least, so it wasn't a complete miss of the first blood. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, first blood. Not quite. But either way, uh, some good action there. You see Clink's getting a little harassed in lane. There's the Anti Mage Blink. Oh, is he going to get his ult off? He does. But is it going to be enough? Anti Mage. Looking to blink again, but that's a really long cooldown. <laughs> Does he have the moves? Is he going to break his ankles? Literally, those bones, they're really fragile. It looks like, <laughs> unfortunately, good choice of blink that is going to finish him off there. Yeah, interesting to see that Andy Mage picks up the Vanguard. I'm really surprised by that. There's no need for him to pick up that defensive item. Actually, we can see here in the middle lane. It looks like Ogre and Clockwork are looking to try and go in here on this Outward Destroyer between the towers. Good multicast there. They're doing a lot of damage, but the nice... Disruption there is going to stop our world is, or stop the clockwork from being able to go in or is it he's going to drop the ultimate and look to go in here and the help invoker they're going to be able to take him down now the queen of pain in some trouble she has the blink up so she can get away if she needs to but it looks like the ogre magi is probably going to go down here as life stealer looks to come in here and try to clean up giving the queen of pain some extra farm there it's very nice exchange I liked seeing the clockwork and the ogre magi try and be really aggressive there but didn't work out as well as they wanted it to. Unfortunately not. I, I did love hearing the jackpot sound effect when that proc, I'm not going to lie. But, uh, you know, really great ultimate actually coming out from Clockwork. That's not an easy thing to hit. So he weaved that pretty well, and it was really nice. You actually see him pick up that Ring of Health. I think you mentioned that, actually. So he's going to go for a Vanguard himself. Want to get a little tanky when he initiates. Not a bad decision. Meanwhile, bottom. Look at Clink's being so sneaky with his Crystal Maiden. What is he What is he plotting here? Just I'm actually stance. looking at... Wow, Bat Rider. What oh, were no. you thinking? He he was stacking up the sticky napalm. Got up to seven stacks. Actually, bottom we have action lane. at the bottom. Here comes the Invoker Sunstrike to pick up the kill on the Crystal Maiden. Good job there. The uh, multicast from Ogre Magi, ensuring that she stayed there just long enough to catch that Sunstrike. So a lot of damage going out here. They're actually going to look to harass this anti mage, trying to do as much damage as he can. Clinks is like, nah, man, I need the creep. Sorry, I, I would like to uh, help you harass him, but I need some kills down here. And so he is actually level 7, hasn't put any points in the Death Pact. He's not interested in going into the jungle and trying to pick up creep kills with that. He just wants to try and stay in the lane and do what he can there. We have Nyx coming in off the side. Is he going to try and go in here on this Ogre Magi? Anti-Mage is already starting it up. They're not going to be able to kill the Clink, so they have to continue to go for this Ogre Magi, but he's just out of range for the open wounds. They just wind up making Clinks spend some of his mana, and then they go back to the farm. And that's how we see Bat Rider is actually trying to do this again. He actually does it successfully, gets the smoke off in time, which he did not do before. Picks up a couple of levels doing that. And there you go. I mean, wow, now he's sitting at 2,000 gold. Almost has his blink dagger. And I'm actually really curious to check and see what the gold graph looks like. And as we can see now, there's Bottom just... Bottom lane anti getting initiated on. 140 life. Does get the blink out in time. Invoker was trying to set up the kill there. Didn't have uh, his second move ready to go, though, the, with the Chaos Meteor. So it wasn't enough damage, unfortunately. This is kind of what I was talking about, that lack of CC. You know, they only had the Ogre Magi really to set that up. So anti -Mage was pretty easily able to blink out of there. Yeah, I mean, I'm really actually upset about the lack of wards because we could see Anti-Mage was behind the tower with no health. There was no way he was going to be able to do anything down there. All they had was Life Stealer. So if they had wards in the river, they could try and watch the enemy team move around. And, you know, I really think the Dyer could have pushed the bottom tower where we actually see Anti-Mage goes down. A stun from Ogre Magi sets up a Clink's auto attack, and it would have been followed up with a sun strike had that not been enough life stealer now looking to come down and try and keep the pressure off this bottom lane but you know the dire really could have probably put a lot of pressure onto this tier one tower bottom and taken the second tower of the game yeah i'm really loving that oh another multicast and life stealer <laughs> he's getting just burnt down literally by both the fire arrows and uh the ogre badge i like that anyway i did uh, that, was, that was pretty good uh, the witty things just come and go 
unfortunately. Uh, he's got his hand of Midas up. Maybe we've had that for a little while now. So his farm is just uh, exponentially increasing here. He's up to 55 creep score. Pretty good for a jungler considering. He's looking actually to set some of his Ogre Magi following into the river. Ogre Magi, uh, you know, running there at the 280 movement speed compared to a 375. So he will be able to just outrun him. He doesn't have the Bloodlust, even one rank yet. That's kind of an interesting choice. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like that or not. I mean, it's definitely, I would say, one of his most powerful spells. Actually, in the bottom lane, there's a little bit more harassed by Anti-Mage. Um, but yeah, I think that's really the thing that makes An or Ogre Magi so good. And if he had that up and was maybe trying to Bloodlust some of his friends, they might be able to get a kill here in the middle lane. They're able to pick it up anyway. Invoker actually picks up the final kill there, doing so much damage with the three Exhorts invoked. I mean, they're hopefully going to be able to push this tower. But nope, Ogre Magi just wants to go back up top. Clockwork leaves the well. A really questionable decision in my opinion. Yeah, that was a little questionable there, but I mean they don't have an amazing pushing power, especially without the Bloodlust actually bottom here. They are setting something at Batrider looking to come in here with that beautiful flame lasso. Here we go, initiation goes to Crystal Mage. She doesn't stand a chance. Tries to do as much damage as she can before she goes out, but that's just the end of that. Uh, so they're going to have just fine farm here, finishing off these creeps here, so good setup there. Clockwork actually right. finds Queen of Pain, they had chased her out, but now she tries to drop the ulti to see if that's enough damage, it's not, they're now trading blows into the vision from the Clockwork, Ogre Magi drops another multicast onto her head and she goes down. Having uh, pushed up to that tier 1 tower, trying to push it with a kid. Actually, now we see in the bottom river, it looks like Clink's being pursued by the Anti-Mage. He looks to ult him, but it's just not doing enough damage. Plenty of support there, so Anti-Mage is going to have to go back down the bottom river and farm. Has finished some power treads, and has that Vanguard finished that he has for a while. So, you know, he's doing a, a pretty decent job there, but it's... Ah, if only he had that Battle Fury, he'd be able to farm so much faster, go into the jungle, and just clear out... Creep camps and really set his team initiation up. Initiation on middle and Voker getting uh, initiated on here. Life Stealer's going in on him, trying to finish him off here. He does. Oh, he just gets that off. Uh, you know, his ghost walks, so he's not able to be detected. They don't have a way to see him here in the lane, so he's just going to hang around here. Not sure exactly what he's plotting, but it's a good job. You saw the uh, Outworld Destroyer ultimate go off, but it just. His intellect was just not much higher than Invoker's, unfortunately, so it only drained mana and didn't really do a lot of damage. It's kind of unfortunate there. Yeah, but it looks like the Dire team is really interested in this middle lane. They have both Ogre Magi and Clockwork looking to sit up here and maybe take out this Nag, so they're going to be seeing coming by. They're going to look to go in on him. A four staff will get Invoker over the Legend, be able to help him get in. The Chaos Meteor drops, and that is enough. Invoker now picks up a dominating streak and the kill on the Nag. Very important to keep down that enemy carry. Yeah, very good job. Meanwhile, bottom. Clinks is just keeping Anti-Mage back, and it's really interesting to see that. You would think Anti-Mage would have complete control of this lane, especially with how much free farm he had in the beginning, but maybe it does account to that Vanguard. I mean, it's not a terrible choice against an auto-attacker. It's going to help him take some of that damage, but, uh, in the, you know, it's still not enough. He can't really apply that pressure on Clinks that he wants to middle lane. Yeah, we have Ogre Magi getting frozen, but they might actually be able to go. Oh, they're going to finish off this Outworld Destroyer there with way too low health. Will Queen of Pain be able to take out this Ogre Magi, though? That is the question. Does she have the ultimate? No, it's still down for 12 seconds. She will actually go down. The Ogre Magi will as well. Crystal Maiden chilling off on the side. Like, I don't want any of this. I'm just going to try and, uh... <laughs> I'm just going to try and get out of dodge here. She does. A two-for-one exchange here in the middle lane, again behind this tower. A favorite spot for Clockwork and Ogre Magi. Oh, looks like that Rider's getting the bomb. Actually, he's gonna get let go though. Um, not even a single point in Flame Break. Uh, you know, I don't completely blame him for that, but you know, it's still an interesting choice when you're getting pursued. It's really nice to be able to, you know, fling people back from you. Life Stealer is not going anywhere anytime soon. He wants to go on Bat Rider so badly, waiting for his allies to come in here, but always got his anti at half health. So obviously, not gonna be a lot of help from uh, him particularly. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at this map control now. We only have one tier one tower left for the Radiant. No wars on the map, so they can't see any of this movement here that the Dire are doing. They're going into the jungle as they should. They're going to catch this Life Stealer out and look to take him down. It looks like we have the Sticky Napalm stacking up on him, the Rocket from the Clockwork, but this Life Stealer is so naturally tanky, he's going to be able to sit safely behind this tower. Ogre Magi was almost wanting to dive the tower there. They're actually going to go behind it now. Life Stealer is going to try and do what he can to get some auto attacks in on the Invoker, but he's actually going to retreat to the safety of his tower. Meanwhile, Ogre Magi looking to go into the Anti-Mage who blinks into the trees. He will be safe for the time being. Looks like everybody's going to get away just fine, but this tier 1 tower will go down. 
uh, the Naix inside one of these dire creeps. So he will survive for now. We'll have to see if the dire team wants to look to stick around these creeps and maybe try and get the kill when he comes out. He does pop out. We'll get away safely. Anti Mage, though, is going to need Good some time. Oh, there. there you go. Blink. And then the ultimate. But it's not enough to kill the life stealer right away. They're gonna leave enough time for Queen of Pain to drop a big ultimate, but it's not gonna kill anyone, or is it? Looks like any mage is gonna come in from the back, drop the ultimate. Will he be able to pick up a second here on this? No, the blink is gonna get Batrider out, but Clockwork is now actually gonna sit and take out the Crystal Maiden, or is he a good frostbite? It's gonna ensure that not only does Crystal Maiden get away, but oh uh, yes, just the getaway. Clockwork gets really low, not able to be taken out, and clinks. Boom! <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> Takes down the Crystal Maiden in the bottom lane using that invisibility. Takes her down quite easily. You know, I was very skeptical at the first seeing of this team comp, but they are just taking full advantage of all of these heroes in this early game. I love it. You know, they had so much pressure from the Batrider with a quick blink dagger. Ruger Magi and uh, Clockwork can just finish up so, or follow up rather, so easily and effectively. And then Clinks is just pumping out the damage. Even though he's only got level 1 strafe, it's still plenty of damage at this point in the game. And he's going to get that Orchid relatively soon. So once he gets that, Anti Mage is going to be in a heap of trouble. Yeah, I, th I think it's really interesting. You know, we see the Radiant team, Queen of Pain, Our World Destroyer, Life Stealer, Anti Mage, a lot of late game potential. But we have Clinks here, has the Strafe, has the Searing Arrows, can just naturally do a lot of damage. And then he's also going to have Ogre Magi bloodlusting him, giving him 50% attack speed at the last rank, and then movement speed, which Clinks already has a lot of. So if those two work together really well, even if this goes late, I think the Radiant team have to be scared because he's going to be able to do a tremendous amount of damage. So they're really going to have to look to try and hold him down. In the meantime, we might have an engagement in the top lane. Invoker trying to defend this tower as best he can with those Forge Spirits. As we can see, he's putting a lot of points into the Exhort. So he is going to be able to actually get two of these Forge Spirits out early on. You know, Anti-Mage and Life Stealer both are going to have to run away. But Batrider showing himself. He kind of wants to start something here. And Invoker now coming down. But they're going to be able to walk away. The Sticky Napalm, not that high of a level. The one sack on Life Stealer isn't going to mean all that much. But actually in the bottom, pardon my talking all the time, Ogre Magi is actually going to look to come in and destroy the Crystal Maiden, getting a multicast and then a rocket from Clockwork, finishing the job. Again, I think just a story of how little vision the Radiant team have. You know, actually, neither team really has vision, let's be honest. There's no wards on the map. So, you know, it's all planted by ear at this point. Oh, Queen of Paint middle, getting caught out here. They're trying to blind ulti into her. I don't know what they thought that would accomplish, but she does escape with that invis rune, fortunately for her, that she had that. Yeah, the vision is all around lacking, but since you're right, the Dire has so much control just because of the advantage they built up. Oh, actually, look at this life stealer. Get caught here. Pat right dropping the ulti, so he can't go anywhere. It doesn't matter if you rage or not. Oh, and the Chaos Mirror misses completely, but there's Captain... Captain Blackbread actually is his name, because there is a Blackbeard too. Uh, I did call that wrong the first time, but there's multicast. Could he just, like, not get one? <laughs> I, he's getting pretty lucky, actually. Here in the bottom lane, we have Clinks. They're trying to initiate on him. They did pop the dust. They can see him. Is there going to be enough movement here? The ultimate drops from Our World Destroyer, reducing Clinks to very little health. But will last oh, a miss on the Queen of Pain ultimate, and then the ulti from Clinks. While he walks by that creep camp, is going to ensure that he gets healed and enough health to get away. Big plays there, dropping the Queen of Pain ulti and Dust and not picking up a kill. Top lane going to get pushed. In the meantime, there's Forge Spirits and Bloodlust doing a lot of work together. You can see that tier 2 going down with ease. Meanwhile, only... Oh, I'm, I stand corrected. No tier 1 towers of the Dire have fallen yet. So they had just had so much trouble applying pressure. And that, I mean, look at their team comp. They don't have really any good pushers on their team. Yeah, I, that's the thing. That whole Radiant team is late game. They don't have a whole lot for the earlier part. And that's exactly where they started to lose it in that early game. And they just aren't keeping enough control. You know, this is the other thing, too. Animage going in that defensive build. He now actually looks to be going uh, Manta style, perhaps. Could even go Sage and Yasha if he wants to get a little bit tankier as we on this see. Invoker. Sorry to interrupt you, but it looks like he's going to turn this around. The Rage is down. He goes inside with one of the four spirits, but oh, what a beautiful ultimate clock. We're going to catch him off guard. Queen of Pain saying, oh, never mind. I'm out of here, boy. Uh, that was a really interesting play here. Looks like Queen of Pain still on the run, but they're not going to be able to catch him. So they're going to just stick around here and try to keep the pressure. I didn't even think about the fact that he could go into that four spirit. That was just awesome. Yeah, really nice play from him. Good heads up play, knowing that he could take advantage of that ability. Um, 
Yeah, what were we talking about before? The late game potential? Yeah, and you know, we have the anti-mage. He's now starting to build damage items. If he had used that early game farm to pick up the Battle Fury, Bat he could have gone into the jungle. Oh god, another kill. Ridiculous. Uh, just the blink dagger initiation. Queen Pain getting caught completely off guard. The bottom lane, actually, we have Clinks looking to go in on this Owl World Destroyer, picking up kills all over the map, but the imprisonment will keep Clinks out of play long enough for him to get away. Whew, we're in our for each other back and forth here. It's just a gag fest all around. It's insane. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see the Dire taking their advantage all the way. They know that the Radiant don't have any kind of map control, and they're making sure that they don't have any space to move around, lane. as we can see. Yeah, Clink's looking to try and go on this anti-mage. He's not going to be able to kill him. Neither hero is really going to be able to kill the other, but he is going to be able to try and harass him out of the lane. And as he does, anti-mage forced to blink out and now port to the top lane to try and pick up some more farm. Interesting I mean, what do you... Choice. I was just curious there. He has his orc and didn't even choose to use on anti-mage there. Oh, that is very interesting. He could yeah, have and we tried something there. Yeah, and we didn't uh, even mention that he has that now finished Ogre Magi actually looking to harass the Animage. You can't find any room to farm, not even just outside of his base. You know, this is a stun from the Ogre Magi and then the initiation from the Clockwork. Very powerful against him. He has to be careful. Actually, it looks like Lifesteal is going to try and go in on this Ogre Magi. Wants to do something with the Animage. He now blinks in, pops the ulti, but he hadn't burned enough mana. And now it looks like they're going to be able to take down the Anti Mage. They do. Before the Ogre Magi even goes down, now it looks like Invoker comes in from behind, able to pick up one kill on the Crystal Maiden. Is he going to look to try and get some more? He possibly could. The Queen of Pain, he's sitting near, but he's going to actually look to try and go up and help Clockwork. Putting up the good wall, keeping him out. Looks like Owl Destroyer tries to force half himself in, but then gets pushed back by the Clockwork Wall. And they're keeping tabs on this Invoker. Actually, Invoker looking to try and hunt down this Lifestealer. They do Batrider able to come in, drops the ulti, and they take him down. Invoker picking up a killing spree. This Batrider was a perfect counter to this Lifestealer. I really love the idea there. Um, you've just seen oh, time and time again how effective he is. He has a Force Staff and a Blink Dagger. Probably one of the most mobile heroes on the map, if not the most. Aside from maybe Clockwork, who's just... Well, you can't compete with that ultimate, let's be honest. But, uh, really interesting player on. I didn't even realize how effective Orchid was against this team until I looked at the full circle. Because Antimage and Queen of Pain and Outworld Destroyer are so spell-intensive that silencing them for that duration is just brutal in, t in those fights. Yeah, I mean, all their mobility comes from those spells, and that's part of what makes those heroes so important. You know, looking around at other items, and I can see the clockwork now. Working on his pipe, he has a hood built, but he has also picked up a point booster, so maybe he isn't interested in taking that all the way to a pipe. Ogre Magi is actually looking to finish a Bloodstone. He has a Perseverance built and the point booster. I really do like that. Actually, in the top lane, we have uh, Clink taking out an Outworld Destroyer somewhere, but actually we have Animage looking to try and take down this Invoker, but he can't even trade auto attack damage because of the Exort. Now, a big stun from the Ogre Magi is going to mean that Queen of Pain goes down. Batrider getting really low as they try and fight this Life Stealer. But it looks like the Dire team will get out unscathed after picking up three kills. Well, Life Stealer actually might be in trouble. <laughs> he has to rage to get away, but he will so actually win. Here comes the Bloodlust and Clockwork. You don't want to mess with that. That's just... Uh, here's, here's the nice thing about Clinks. He has such good split push potential because of the strafe and the searing arrows, and we're seeing that right now. He's working on that bottom lane, takes out the tier 2 tower down there, while the team looks to go in on the tier 1 tower, and actually a good ultimate from the Bat Rider. They're going to try and pull out this Life Stealer, take him down. They have so much crowd control. The Power Cogs will ensure that he goes down. The Dire team all in really low health, but they're not afraid to fight this Radiant team because of the strong advantage they have. Oh, this is just brutal at this point. The gold advantage is now over 15,000 in the favor of the Dire Experience, over 10,000. Oh, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. 10,000 gold experience. It's actually almost 15,000 now. Regardless, oh, Bloodstone Fish by Ogre Magi. That's what you were talking about the other day, wanting to see that built on him, and there you go. Really good choice, especially with how much they're snowballing this game. You know, it's going to be really easy to k keep those stacks up. Yeah, it's neat to see, too, that Ogre Magi doing what is common for Lashrax in competitive play. He had the Arcane Boots, breaks them down, and uses that to put his Bloodstone together. And actually, we have here, using the Alacrity as well as the Bloodlust, they're being able to speed up this Clinks to be able to destroy these towers. And, you know, this is a lot of the potential from the Dire team that we hadn't really thought about earlier. Being able to also use the Alacrity to make their Clinks a formable... Uh, 
enemy in the later part of the game. Clockwork just missed his ultimate. Queen of Pain blinked through the woods to escape him, and he just missed a blind hook. It was so close, but unfortunately not the case. Bottom lane, here we go. This should be definitely the set with the Orchid. I want to see how this plays out. He's going to use it. There he goes with his strafe. Doesn't have fire arrows on. Now he does. It's really unfortunate, though, that he didn't <laughs> have that on in the beginning. That would have absolutely been a dead anti-mage. Actually, interesting to note, though, that he built that chrysalis on a hero that when he does shoot a chrysalis and procs a crit, it doesn't... Actually, here at the top lane, we have Lifestealer going down a big stun from the Ogre Magi. Sets that up, and the Ogre Magi will actually pick up the kill now, getting himself up to 700 gold. We're going to have to see what he looks to go with that looking really raw. There's the Bloodstone and the Magic Wild and the Basic Boots. Um, he's going to be able to sustain this push down here in the bottom lane, be able to cast Bloodlust as much as he wants. And we have actually a blink from the Batrider. He looks to go in here, and Volker also there to help. They take out the Queen of Pain. Batrider does actually go down for that, but two for one trade, very nice. Look how ballsy this Ogre Magi is. Throwing past the tower, trying to stun up the Outworld Destroyer, but is this a mistake? It looks like it might be. The ultimate from Crystal Maiden goes down, trying to take him out. Outworld Destroyer will pick it up with the ultimate. A nice uh, Chaos Meteor goes in here to try and help the clockwork, but now Anti Mage looks to try and come in here and pursue as well, dropping the ultimate, but it's not doing any damage to that clockwork. Sitting on so much health, so much health regeneration. And then, of course, the spell resistance from the pipe of insight that he has finished. Bottom, meantime, look at Klinks just wrecking this tower. This is Radiant's unbelievable damage tower. coming out from him. Uh, you know, he doesn't have that ulti up, unfortunately, so not getting his max damage potential. But look how much he does. It doesn't even matter. Um, it looks like they are going to notice that. Crystal Man coming in with their tranquil boots, like, hey, buddy, I'm on to you. You know, coming up to follow up on that. But Antimage. He's only got the Asha and the Vanguard. I mean, his damage, where is it? That is their team damage, and it's just not enough. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, they don't have wards still. They did play some towards Top River earlier, but now all their wards are down. So he can't even safely go into the jungle. We actually see Invoker is going to find Queen of Pain going to the closest camp. And using the Ice Wall, using the Forge Spears, she gets decimated, having been sheeped by the Invoker, who now is also sitting on a Magic Staff. He is just doing way too much damage at this staff. point. What I say, but magic it is staff. magical. It is a you magical, know. <laughs> magical staff of sorts. Uh, I think Gandalf owned it at one point. But yeah, I mean, uh, really interesting though that he didn't decide to go Agamons. You know, such a very almost a no-brainer pickup for Invoker to reduce that ultimate cooldown as well as make it have no mana cost. But I guess at this point in the game, it really doesn't matter. And actually, sight the vise against their team makes way too much sense. So I do like that pickup. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of insult to injury. I mean, they're grabbing the Aegis the Immortal, which they don't even really need to be able to sustain a good push, but they're going to pick it up anyway, maintain their advantage. When your head get further ahead, they say, and so they will be able to have this sixth life now that they can try and take around the map. We actually have Life Stealer taking so much damage from Clinks. The Sunstrike by Invoker is going to miss completely, but Life Stealer can't even teleport away. Clink's doing so much damage. He got that Daedalus finished up, so his damage is just off the chart. Well, actually, it's on a chart. It says 230. So it's just really high on that chart. But it is, but nonetheless, we found it on the chart. Um, unlike the Golden speaking Experience charts. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, speaking of gold charts, 20,000 uh, advantage for the Dire and for the Experience Graph. 25,000 ish just ish. advantage ish you know ballpark it crazy crazy advantage we see actually queen of pain looking to do what she can seeing that the entire dire team is at bottom she's like okay i can try and get my team some kind of an advantage some kind of gold generation i'm gonna come up here and try and take this tower anti-mage picks up the mana styles he's gonna have to use it to try and defend this bottom uh, lane. I mean, the Alacrity now up on the Forge Spirit. The Bloodlust not coming out for Ogre Magi all that much. He has put it on himself. He does have it on the Invoker, actually. And now it looks like Batrider is actually going to try and blink in, grab a hold of the Outworld Destroyer. He goes down. No problem. There's nothing any mage can do to try and stop it. One at a time now. It looks like Life Stealer is the next one to try and go into the Dire team. He just hops into a creep. He is a little bit safer than Outworld Destroyer was. They're not going to be able to stop this tower from going down. They look to try and continue this attack. Ogre Magi pops the stun. A deafening blast coming out on the life sealer, but they're very intelligently look, just looking to try and go on the melee barracks. And Animage is really trying to make something happen here. They try and all go in on the tankiest hero there, that clock where he puts up the cogs and he is actually going to be A-OK. -okay. The wall will actually push life sealer out. 
will get taken down in the meantime. Invoker will also go down, though, in the back, looking to try and do as much damage as he could before going down. He will come up now with the Aegis the Immortal, going to try and take down this Anti-Mage, getting sheeped, getting the, the Firebomb from Batrider, that great Flame Break ability that just got uh, changed not too long ago, and they're now going to take this Melee Barracks in the bottom lane. Oh, did you mention that that was 4v5? No. Without their high DPS planks? Yeah. So, That's... imagine if he was there. That's all I had to say about that fight. Uh, really well played. A really strange decision. See, Antimage just darting for that uh, clockwork, like you said. I mean, that is the tankiest hero by far on their team, and yet he really just wanted to you know, get it out of him. I guess he had some vengeance abide, like, man, I'm pissed off at those ultis, I'm done with you. But, uh, Strange to see uh, the Clockwork actually finish an Erdo Shadows really late. I mean, he just wants to be able to keep his team up at this base, trying to pick up whatever uh, charges he can from killing the Radiant team as they look to push into the base. They've now claimed the second lane in the game, so they're probably going to be able to close this out here, but they actually want to keep this attack going. They try and go on the life steal. There's so much damage coming out. Fat Rider doesn't even get the ultimate off. He now decides to drop it on the Queen of Pain, dragging her away from the safety of her fountain. A third kill as Crystal Maiden also gets picked off during that engagement. They're just going to look to try and finish this game up. A really well-played game by the Dire so, Team. So, BDLM, I learned something today. You know what did you learn? Clinks plus Bloodlust plus Alicrity. It's the sickest work. thing I've ever seen. Perhaps. And it's really nice because we saw even Clinks had some trouble in the early game. You know, against the anti-mage Crystal Maiden lane, but he didn't give up any kills and was able to just try and get whatever farm he could. And as soon as he was able to get that Orc of Malevolence, he was really able to be a strong force on the map. Wow, really great play all around. And they well deserved by the die here. What were you saying at the beginning? Questionable pickups, I guess really smart actually lane play during the game and just really took full advantage of that early game. Really well played. Any final thoughts you had? No, I just like you said, a really well played game by the Dire. Be sure guys to stay tuned for the next game in the pub championship of the world universe. World. <laughs> See you then. See you.